Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the 12th lecture for our course Irrigation Engineering and Hydraulic Structures. Right. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about the losses of water in irrigation canal. So uh, the point we need to know is that for an efficient design, what we said in our starting lectures, we need to design the canal so that it should be efficient, right? So what should an efficient canal look like? What are the properties on, of an efficient canal? An efficient canal should, what kind of canal is known as efficient canal? Efficient canal uh, designing means, it means two things. Efficient canal design means less loss of water, okay, and maximum water should reach to the field in less time period. If this happens, that means that your design is efficient. Otherwise, there are uh, some losses in your canal. So we need to overcome them, right? So these are conditions to be an efficient design of a canal. So for this, for this reason, For that, we need to take care of, we need to take care of the losses, take care of the water losses in the canal, right? To, to, to take care of the water losses in the canal, we need to reduce it as minimum as possible. Got it. So that is the reason that before starting our designing phase, we must know uh, the different kind of losses in a water canal, right, and how to reduce or overcome those losses in the canal. So the point is that so uh, so before. There is the reason that before starting the design of any canal, we need to know, we need to know about the losses. in the canal. Got it. So for that, we need a uh, few important points to know.
for any efficient for any efficient design we need what we need maximum efficiency right efficient designs mean we need maximum efficiency and for maximum efficiency what do we need for maximum efficiency we need to control either control or reduce or minimize losses water losses in canal right so how can we reduce these losses to reduce these water losses we should know the reason behind these losses got it so this is what we are going to discuss uh, in our today's video so uh, the first thing is that for an efficient design we need what we need maximum efficiency and for uh, for maximum efficiency for maximum efficiency for maximum efficiency we need to control reduce or minimize the water losses in the canal and to reduce these water losses we should know the reason behind the losses right so this is uh, all what we are going to discuss in our today's video these were some important points so now let's see what are the uh, different kind of losses we will find in a canal got it so we actually have four different kind of losses in a canal what are those losses the first one is first one is operation losses second one is seepage sorry seepage losses third one is percolation percolation pardon me if there are some spelling mistakes there is percolation losses and fourth one can be absorption losses so these are the four losses you will face in an irrigation canal because uh, we know that the certain amount of water is always lost from a canal 
either in form of evaporation or seepage right so the main causes of uh, our water loss in a canal are evaporation and seepage that is the reason we we call these two evaporation losses and seepage losses they are known as these two are known as the major losses and remaining two percolation and absorption losses these are known as minor losses so usually we ignore these two losses of water percolation and absorption because they are too minor to be considered so these two are our minor losses okay these two are uh, minor losses so let's start with our first one first major loss evaporation loss let's see how evaporation loss occurs in a canal let's try to understand uh, how evaporation losses occur in a canal or you can generally make it a little bit more general how instead of operation we, we will say how water losses occur in, in a canal so let's try to uh, draw a figure and try to understand how different kind of uh, water losses occur in a canal let's try to draw a figure okay let's say this is a cross section of a canal let's see yep this one is a cross section trapezoidal cross section of a canal okay got it and then mm, let me draw one more thing or oh, okay let's say this is our sun okay and then uh blue and dots let's say this is our full capacity of the canal okay this is what this is our full capacity of canal this is the water level of the canal and let's say the sun provides heat right when sun heats up the water in this canal then what is going to happen obviously this water will water from the surface will start to 
evaporate right evaporation evaporation will occur what what is going to happen when the water starts to evaporate when water will evaporate obviously this water level will will come down right let's draw it there after discussing the seepage this is the evaporation after evaporation the second thing thing which is going to happen is that water can seep either through the either through sorry either through the side walls it is going to seep right seep out or it can seep through these through the bed of the canal so this is this is known as the seepage seepage of water okay these are two major seepage uh, losses water losses which can occur in a canal this is our side slope right side slope water can see from here and this is our bed of canal so what is going to happen if this bed or side slope there are two cases there can be two cases if side slope or bed are made up of soil or clay right which we call alluvial soil right if it is made up of alluvial soil what is going to happen seepage will occur right and if the second case if the bed or side slope are uh, made up of let's say if side slope or bed are made of concrete or any other material the losses will be the losses will be there but they are so minor that they can be ignored so that means that it will if your concrete bed uh, canal bed or slope are made up of concrete it will reduce the water losses to a higher level 
as compared to the soil bed and slope right as compared to soil based material so that means that if you construct your bed or slope of canal with concrete then the water losses in this case are approximately equal to zero Sorry. so what's the important point to note here the important point is that if your canal is made up of alluvial soil then you will face the problem of seepage right evaporation is going to be happen in both cases but seepage is going to be higher in case of alluvial soil but if your um, canal is made up of concrete or any other material then it will reduce the problem of the seepage right problem of the seepage and the water losses will be approximately equal to zero they are going to be so minor that mm, we will ignore those losses so after seepage or evaporation in any canal what is going to happen as we know that this is our full capacity level right this is f c l full capacity level of the canal but after evaporation and seepage what is going to happen after evaporation and seepage the full capacity level of the canal will will the level will move downward right after evaporation and this new level is after evaporation and the page the level of water will come down or you can say it will reduce got it so this is how the water losses occur in a water canal so what we can conclude we can conclude we can conclude that we can uh, conclude that for unlined canal there will be higher seepage and lined canals the seepage is uh, is controlled so from the above discussion it can be concluded that uh, it can be concluded that unlined canal is higher seepage as compared to unlined canals right line canal line canal seepage can be controlled okay
unlined canals higher C page, lined canals C page will be less. It's approximately equal to zero and it can be controlled. So these losses write down another important point. Uh, these losses are around 20 to 50 percent of total quantity of water or maybe sometimes maybe as high as possible depending on what depending on various factors okay so the losses can be in between 20 to 50 percent of the total quantity of water but it can be higher or it can be less depending on various factors so here we are going to discuss some factors which are affecting the rate of evaporation rate of seepage okay before that you should know that a canal water losses are we already discussed right evaporation losses or seepage losses so these seepage losses are further divided into two percolation losses and the second one is absorption losses okay water losses uh, first one is our operation loss and second one is seepage losses. Seepage losses are further divided into two. Percolation losses and absorption losses. So let's start with the factors. Factors affecting the Evaporation losses first. Factors affecting the evaporation losses. There are various factors. We will discuss these factors one by one. Okay. So as compared to CPA losses, the operation losses will be very less, two to five percent, right? The main cause of water loss is seepage. The operation as compared to seepage is very less. So these losses are very less as compared to seepage, and these are of the order two to five percent of the total losses. In extreme cases, these losses can rise up to 7% of total losses. So, operation losses depends on several factors like climate conditions, wind, temperature, and depth of water bodies, atmospheric pressure, salt concentration, and surface area of water bodies. Okay. So, let's see the relationship um, between these factors and evaporation. 
So the point you need to note first is that as as compared to seepage losses evaporation evaporation losses will be two to five percent less and in some extreme conditions extreme conditions it can go up to seven percent that's it so the factors the first factor which affect the rate uh, rate of evaporation is climate change climatic conditions or you can say climate conditions rate of evaporation obviously depends upon the rate of condition uh, climate condition so the point here is that as we know that the ra rate of evaporation is directly proportional to uh, the difference of this is a formula the difference of saturation vapor pressures and vapor pressure of air okay so whenever the difference of the uh, saturation vapor pressure and vapor pressure of air increases the rate of evaporation is going to increase okay so what is es uh, sorry, it's not E. We represent saturation with this. So, saturation of vapor pressure. This represents vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. So, saturated vapor pressure. This is saturated. vapor pressure and this vapor pressure is vapor pressure of air so whenever the, the difference of saturated vapor pressure and vapor pressure of air increases the operation is going to increase so they have a direct relation directly proportional so what is going to happen if uh, saturated vapor pressure is equal to your vapor pressure of air what is going to happen obviously if both are equal the evaporation rate is going to be zero because the difference between these two is uh, going to be zero if this is zero that means evaporation will be zero because both are directly proportional to each other and the second factor Second factor is this was our first factor climate and climatic condition and second factor is temperature. Everyone knows that whenever temperature will increase, rate of evaporation will increase. So evaporation is directly proportional to temperature. Okay, temperature will increase, then evaporation will increase. Third factor is wind speed. Wind speed also affects the rate of evaporation. 
what is do, what is going to happen for wind speed actually we have a uh, graph this is our wind speed initially initial case is evaporation is directly proportional to wind speed by the time will come when the evaporation will remain constant even after increase of speed of wind so in case of this why this actually happens if this happens because let's say we have we have two examples right like there is some sort of evaporation right in in one case if there is evaporation what is going to happen if there is no wind the vapor vapors will stay here right if no wind but when when the wind will come from one direction let's say from this direction what is going to happen this wind will force these vapors to move from here to here and it depends upon the speed of the wind if wind is blowing from here vapors will travel and more vapors will occur what this means obviously the, if these vapors are shifted from the here to here then a space will create here right to fill out this space uh, uh further vapors will come up here to accommodate this space so if the vapors are uh, vapors will travel from this place to this place then more vapors will occur and hence rate of evaporation will increase got it but a time will come when this whole condition will saturate when it will saturate after saturation it will become constant okay constant means the rate of wind speed will become equal to the rate of evaporation so in that condition your graph will become this after that point got it so that's the reason initially uh, evaporation and wind speed are directly proportional and the time where wind rate of wind speed and evaporation at at this point rate of wind speed becomes equal to rate of evaporation okay that's the reason so the next factor next factor is our fourth factor fourth factor is what is our fourth factor fourth factor which affects the rate of evaporation is depth of water body depth of water body how it is going to affect uh, let's say if it is there will there may be two conditions if it is summer season or 
either it is winter season in summer season if your water body or canal is shallow then there will be more evaporation if it is deep or less shallow and deep then there will be less evaporation similarly in winter things are going to be opposite if it is shallow then there will be less evaporation if it is deep then more evaporation will occur okay so it it depends upon two factors your uh, season your weather either it is summer or winter or and the other factor is the depth of your body either it is shallow or deep okay and other few factors are it also depends upon your uh, atmospheric pressure and it also depends upon the concentration of salt in the water body and what else it also depends upon the surface area of water body obviously rate of evaporation will increase if surface area is more so they are directly proportional with the concentration of salt evaporation is inversely proportional to the salt concentration if salt con concentration is higher in your water body evaporation will be less because they will become more denser okay it will depend upon the density because of density they are inversely proportional and with atmospheric pressure it is uh, also inversely proportional atmospheric pressure if atmospheric pressure increases then error to evaporation will decrease their inversely proportional to atmospheric pressure so these were some important factors which affect the uh, rate of evaporation and how we can find the evaporation uh, evaporation can be evaporation can be calculated by using various methods such as such as pen evaporation method pen evaporation method and then standard class pen evaporation method standard class evaporation method and there is another method known as colorado method to find the evaporation there are there is an uh, empirical method too and there are few other methods but we are going to discuss these methods in detail when we will start uh, our environmental engineering course okay for now we just need to remember these names got it 
and write down two important points as notes to notes what are two important points the first point you need to note is that the operation losses are known non predictable right so we on uh, consider only approximate values approximate values so they are non predictable so estimation of evaporation losses are done on approximation basis means that we cannot we cannot find out the exact value for the evaporation losses right so they cannot be predicted exactly but the evaporation losses can be reduced we can reduce them can be reduced by by taking some measures for example placing some uh, shades 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 over the water body okay. so these were few important points the next is our we have discussed we have discussed the factors related to the operation and the next is our C page. We are going to discuss that in our next lecture because already we are over 49 minutes, 50 minutes, and it's almost near to one hour. So I don't want to make it more boring. So let's close it here, and in next video we will discuss about the C page losses. Okay. So. For now, goodbye. See you guys in next video.